Is it on, bud? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we wish to welcome each one of you here. This is a, a real choice occasion. We, uh, we want these to be memorable occasions. Um, we feel that this is a very important meeting. We wish to uh, excuse Vaughn and Floyd uh, at their request because of their assignment. I know they would do anything to be here, but um, anything we, but follow, uh, yeah. but offend the brethren. That's right. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but they're anything. very committed to their assignment, and they're where they need to be. We wish to also congratulate uh, uh, Bud, who hasn't officially been congratulated by the members of the family <laughs> as he obtained the office of bishop. Uh, congratulate Bob as he has obtained the office of state president. And in his area, and uh, yeah, and our condolences too. <laughs> whatever, whatever you wish. Um, there are good assignments. Uh, Bud's position there as a bishop is a very choice assignment, um, and um, enjoy them because you'll be released one day, and it'll be a real letdown. I know. Um, also, we uh, wish to congratulate uh, Donna and Kenneth for their call to serve on a mission. It's going to be in Switzerland. Well, that's great, and we congratulate you for that. 11th of July. 11th of July, you leave. Okay. Yes. We've been called to help start a new branch. Oh, is that 400 singles. Would you? Would you? Uh, branch president? Well, it's a group of seven couples. We'll be like all of us branch presidents, working with 400 inactive people. That's great. And it's running wow. right. It's, it's, it's a Jay brand Paul. new program. But what is your position there, Jay? What, well, uh, it's so new, we don't really we, know yet. <laughs> still trying to figure that out. Congratulations. <laughs> we will all be branch presidents and carry the same authority as, as bishops, power to forgive. And our objective is to round up these 40% uh, of the stake who are totally inactive and prepare them for the temple. As we can. Is this um, is this a new assignment that the church is using for a? Uh, no, it's our state president. No, no, it was written. It was something that the state president uh, felt should be done, and uh, yes. we are to uh, write the rules as we go along. Tell the yes. state president. We ask a question. He says you figured out. Pioneer yeah. the program. That's great. <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it's probably a pioneer program. We're being given. We're being given uh, a, a, a clerk, and um, everything that a branch has to operate with. That's great. That's great. We hope you don't have another heart attack. We feel, yeah. no, no. Me too. <laughs> we feel very encouraged about it because, because, because we like working with, with singles. See, it is, it is singles, male and female, who are totally inactive, and split families. Not split. Part member. Part member, part member families. families. Uh -huh. Who are totally inactive, and it's it's going to be a fun thing for us. I, I think that we would be interested. And I know Bob would. I think we would be interested in the outcome and, and how it progresses, Jay. So I have some of those. Yes, I think you all do. I I think Jay though is. Um, with his new assignment, is grooming his hair different? I hardly recognize it. <laughs> <laughs> now, now that you brought that up, I got to mention that. I think I think these Utah people got the password and they keep it to themselves. Uh, I went to I went to one of their barbers and I sat down. And I said, "Listen, I'm going to a, a family reunion. All I want is a trim. No, no good." And uh, and so take it easy. How do you like it? I like it full on the sides. <laughs> you look like you've been butchered. But, yes, I know that. I know. Sure. I know. I can see the skin. You can see my glasses where they should be hid. The whole was. I. I mean, embarrassed. <laughs> I like it. Put your hand on. You look great. No, I like that. It's the first time I haven't looked like you. Thank <laughs> you. That's great. Now listen, well, you, you can't take it too far. I'll refuse to feed your economy. <laughs> Jay, Jay, you look great. Okay. We, uh, we uh, appreciate uh, that information, Jay and Flo. Okay, our uh, D has asked me to conduct, and he, he presides, um, 
Our, our opening hymn will be Love One Another, page 308, if we, no one has books, but I think you know it. Uh, Love One Another, after which we've asked Donna Brown to offer the invocation. through the agenda for the next two days anyway, or three days. Monday, starting tomorrow morning at 9.30, we meet down at Barbara's place. And we're going to be spending all the morning, we'll be eating the noon meal there, and we're going to be there, it's going to be a fun day, we're going to be play, playing games, try to involve even Jay as much as possible. But... Um, <coughs> We'll be playing games and um, and uh, visiting, enjoying each other. 9.30 at Barbara's place. Following the conclusion of, of then, and that's going to be loose, we come up here um, and we'll be playing games here, whatever you want to do here. It's going to be a loose day Monday. Until Monday night, we have a family home evening here at uh, our home. Uh, and that that will begin. Uh, what time did we, we said at 6:30, Bob? Well, we can decide right now. I think I think 6:30, like we did to, tonight. <laughs> Is it a slumber party afterwards? I think 6:30, uh, so, and then uh, well, if we want, <laughs> yeah, um, the 6:30 would be fine. Here at our home tomorrow evening. 
for a family home evening, and Bob's got something special prepared for that, and, and uh, we all want to be here and participate in that, and we want this also recorded tomorrow night for the benefit of all family members. Um, and I think what Bob has prepared for that night is, is going to take the full evening. I think it'll take it all. Uh, is there any questions about tomorrow? Okay, and Tuesday, beginning at um, beginning at nine o'clock, we meet at the Salt Lake Temple at nine o'clock for ceilings. We have elected not to go through an endowment session or initiatories because of uh, the conditions of some that are present, and so. It will be ceilings, and Jay will set that up with a, um, or Dee will set that up with a special uh, sealer at the temple what for time us is that? at nine o'clock, and and at the Salt Lake Temple, and that will go for two hours. Is we that will after we're in our clothes, or just when we get there? Yeah. Uh, you want us ready? We want to be ready at, well, at nine. So now, okay. You remember, I have to make an appointment, and I'll do that tomorrow morning. Make an appointment. If by chance I have a problem, then I'll have to get on the phone real fast. But in other words, tomorrow's Monday. Tomorrow's I know, but the temple's closed. open tomorrow morning. What well, is? Yes. Yeah. So, so late, 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 late Monday morning. And so I'll, I'll try to make an appointment for at this time. But. Um, See, this still hanging loose a little bit. Well, normally, so, ceiling, ceiling sessions don't involve this many. Now, are you going to have two sessions? Well, two I, rooms? No, no. Don't know. If, if I can have two, two rooms, I, then I'm going to try it. But, but your, as it stands now, you're looking to having us there for the 9 o'clock session to start. At to night. start. If we don't have a session, we don't have ceilings, we can always go through a session. That's right. That's right. And we'll, we'll, we'll play that by ear when we get there. you don't have to be there that long. But you can if you want. Now, we have, I have quite a few names that are available for seating, but if I don't have enough, we can use temple names. Mm -hmm. Then we plan on eating dinner following that session at the temple. Following, following uh, uh, the meal at the temple, then we will uh, take our chances because that's all we can do and, and go to the movie Legacy. Legacy and hope we can get in with Yeah, with we can. Uh, uh, we were in yesterday. And it's easy to get the tickets. We checked out. What you do is you, you have to be there first thing in the morning, and you can get tickets at any showing during the entire day. So Talmadge and I will be right there. We'll get the tickets for everybody. Good. It's, and just Good. Wonderful. It starts at 8 o'clock. So we have time. to decide which one we want to be That's on. That's correct. And you, it's going to be easy to get. Be after lunch. And we're going to. Full, aren't they? So mm -hmm. we'll be out of the session at 11, and we should be finished eating by uh, 12, 12.30. Should we go for the one o'clock? Yeah. Let's go for the one o'clock. Uh, um, that is movie. great. I am so pleased about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you seen it? No. no. Oh, yeah. One other thing. Oh, those, yeah, those who don't you want to go to the legacy, they, they want to go over to the museum. That's next door. The museum is extremely nice. It's, it's, there's some new oh, things in the museum. Going through the whole Joe Smith building. Yeah, there's a nice tour that you can take through the Joe Smith. It's a 30-minute tour. It's and go up on the top floor, and if you get with a, a guide, she'll point out the different homes where some of the brethren, early <laughs> brethren had lived. Now, the only, the only way this is going to work good is if we are at this uh, ready for the 9 o'clock session tomorrow. If we miss that 9 o'clock session, that's going to change the whole rush schedule. Things for us. Well, that's Tuesday, I think we, we, we've we probably got a half hour I mean, loose Tuesday, there, yeah. though, because of that. So The legacy uh, takes an hour, uh, essentially. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any question uh, about that? With you when you go then ahead. following the legacy, then yeah. again, we come back out here and we play games. When the Packers get together, we've got to have some game playing, so... So, and then we play games again. Uh, I might it's, mention, just for Wendell's benefit, the star of the show is David Walker. Now, there wasn't a legal David Walker, but Wendell's grandfather, William Holmes Walker, was in the Hans Mill Massacre. He was, he did a lot of these things. And what she said was that they draw stories from a lot of people yeah. and put them together and make uh, make believe the stories. Mm -hmm. that I every about. story and everything that was in it's it is legal. true yeah. and yeah. happened, but not to... All one exactly person, right. one family. Right. My grandfather's uh, wagon was parked about five miles away from there, 
he, he knew there was danger there, some rumors anyway. But he wanted to walk up, so he walked up alone to discover what it, what it was like. And while he was there, the, the, when the mob came. And he was wounded, but he just stepped under a little, uh, some plank out of a bank and was in plain sight. Two different people come up and looked at him, cried at him and said, no, he isn't here. He prayed that the Lord would blind their eyes. Yeah. Hey, do you want to say yeah. anything about that uh, yeah. wagon? Wait a minute, Go ahead. Give it to Jake. Because that might be able to say something. Yeah, it's a good point. That's a good point for him now. So give it away to Jake. The covered wagon. Mm -hmm. Can you point the camera to Jake? The one that really tipped over. Jake, can you tell us about that? Uh, yeah. It's a little... They planned it, of course, when they planned that, they uh, hadn't planned it to be quite as drastic as it turned out to be. I hate to move it. But it uh, turned out that they... Uh, <laughs> the uh, it was so realistic that they decided to leave it in. And did somebody get hurt in it, Jay? Yeah. What, was that planned? No. But that, it was so realistic that that's why they kept it in, because that's the way things really were. In the regular show, in the regular show. The cameras were kept running. Well, you watched the film. What Jay was saying, and it was amazing. The maker of that film, Keith Merrill, lives up in our area, and he said he know he received guidance in it. Well, you know who Keith Merrill was. He was a brother to Dixie Merrill that they ran dated and she waited for him but when she, when they ran come back why well, Dixie wasn't quite what he wanted. What and time Tuesday her, night back to for games? <clears throat> and her brother says Vicky Merrill and Tuesday night let's um yeah, and, and that was let's, why let's just plan it right after the legacy. We have to go back to the house and rest Do you? Okay. You get here whenever you can. Whenever you can get here the <laughs> earlier the better. <laughs> Because if there's four here, it only takes four to play making the game. Huh? Well, whatever. Okay. Dinner that night? <clears throat> uh, Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. um, but you that watch Legacy kind of watch that particular scene because it didn't mean to go that way, and that wagon goes to tipping over. They just show a close scene of the wheels close to a bank, and and muddy, uh, uh, wet. Uh, trail and it actually goes over the bank and it wasn't intended and the horses go kind of wild and and all that was filmed right along and it wasn't an in, intention in so it was okay Bill what's the uh, meal schedule Monday evening? Uh, Joanne would you come please? If we're supposed to be on our own we'll do it. No, no we have uh, The meal schedule for Monday evening is what now? You got? We're coming to eat. Mm -hmm. Food. Okay. No. It'll be taken care of. Here? What about here. Well, if you're coming back here, it'll be here. If it's going to be at Barbara's, I'll haul everything down there. Well, no. It won't be at Barbara's. Noon will be at Barbara's. I mean, I've got that. And I'll the meal all, here. All, prepared. all you have to do is stick them in the... They're cooked, but they what they about about just Tuesday wanted night? to know if there was one. When everything's Tuesday done. Tuesday night, I've got it all fixed. Everything's okay. taken care of. You just be here, okay? Uh, the the only thing that we're asking you to do is to have your breakfasts where you're at. Do you have relatives where you're at, Bob? Yeah, we're we're fine. You sure? Yeah, we we're honeymoon. If if they're going to McDonald's, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. we've got plenty of room for breakfast yeah, here. But we just need to know if you're going to come. Yeah. Okay. And what what about no, Tuesday evening meal? We'll we've got plenty of room for well, breakfast we'd here. Like we'd love to have you here if you can. For breakfast, because we're not playing. So she wants to be careful. Most, most everyone will have breakfast where they're staying. Yes. Yes. Okay, what was that, Kenneth? Well, what's your uh, Tuesday evening meal? Are you planning any meal yes. Tuesday yes. evening? Yes. 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 You have, it's all planned. Monday evening, it's all planned. Yes. Yes. And Tuesday, Tuesday yeah. evening. And Monday yes. And lunch at Barbara's. Yeah. And Dale, what about finances on that? Tuesday lunch is the deal. Yeah, be sure you submit that. We will. We will. Okay. All right, and just a word to Vaughn and Floyd. Uh, we hope that uh, they'll get together with their family while we're playing games up here and do something down there so that they won't feel left out of all the fun that we're going to be having. I feel very, very 
very, in fact, five very sorries for them. So, um, but anyway, I, I'm sure they wish they could be here. Okay, going further, we have asked Dee to spend some time and visit with us about temple service and, and maybe a little about family history, but um, main, mainly temple service, how we can serve better in our temples where we live. Okay, Dee? President Tinkley was talking about Governor Ford and uh, how he betrayed the prophet at, the, at Carthage. It reminded me of an incident that took place in Salt Lake Temple. When I was a missionary, I visited the grave of Wil um, uh, Governor Bo Boggs, uh, Wilburn Boggs. It's out of Santa Rosa, California. And I knew that he was the one that issued the extermination order to drive the the early saints out of uh, Missouri. And he died in California in pretty bad circumstances. Well, we had a young man, and by the way, when this happened, Joseph Smith made a statement somewhat to this effect, that anyone who raises their heel against the priesthood or against the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints will be den denied the priesthood blessings to the third and the fourth generation. Now, we had a young man come into the temple and into the initiatory, and he introduced himself as a brother Boggs. He was a fifth generation from Governor Boggs. It's rather interesting. And he was in the temple doing endowment work for the dead. Probably the first. Probably the first of his generation. That is very interesting. <clears throat> I'm going to, let's have a little bit of fun. Let's have a little bit of fun. I have a pedigree chart here, briefly of Meredith, uh, I mean Talmadge Meredith, and I want to have a little bit of fun with you. Now, uh, Talmadge had a great ancestor going back, the Meredith line goes back, but she had a one person, Dudley Do-Right. Now this du Dudley Do-Right was a prince of a fellow. He, was, uh, he helped the ladies across the street and he rescued several uh, <laughs> young ladies and things like this, but he was bald. Bald as a bowling ball. Never, never had any hair on his head. Well, uh, it had to be that Tommy decided she didn't want him in her genealogy because she didn't want any of her kids to be bald. So she zapped him, took him right out. Right. And uh, also in another line, there's a fellow by the name of Bart. And they call him Black Bart because he was, had black hair and he was a stinker, a real stinker. And so they, she zapped him too. Now what does that do to Tommy? Well, first thing, this Dudley do right had a daughter that he didn't have, and she was supposed to have married uh, Meredith, but she didn't marry him because she never existed. Her father never existed. And it comes on down to where Talmadge didn't exist. <laughs> there was no such a she person. She won't do that again. <laughs> there was no such a person as Talmadge. It really didn't matter because Black Bart's uh, uh, progenitor didn't live either. No, he didn't. she got it from both directions. <laughs> She got it from both directions. Now, if your if dad or mom never existed, then it's a sense that none of us would be here. We'd be still floating around in the spirit world, looking, waiting for us a mortal body to take over. So you see, now every person is important. Now, I want to go a little bit further in something else. When when Meredith was born, she inherited a certain amount of when Thomas, I mean, she inherited a certain amount of genes and. Um, such from her mother, from her mother and her father. She got about half from her father and from about half from her mother. And then she got a certain part percentage of them from her grandparents, each pair of grandparents. Some from her great grandparents. It's rather interesting then, when we say we are the blood of Israel, what do we mean by that? Is there, is there a blood connection there? Actually, it's a gene connection and a chromosome connection and a DNA connection. Now, if, uh, if Ma Tomich was to prove her parentage, uh, her, uh, being a child of her parents, science could do that. They can find out better than any other way that she is positively a child of her parents through the DNA, through the genes and such. The genes are millions of them in each cell 
and they determine what a cell does. In other words, whether you have brown eyes or black uh, blue eyes, or whether you have brown hair, whether you're short or tall, or spread out and fat. In other words, it determines all those things. It also determines that these genes uh, instruct the cells how to reproduce themselves. They're exact clones. This each cell, so that when one side is a, pure, a mirror image of the other side. So you see these genes play a very important part. And I can see, in, uh, in, I've seen a picture of Zara Pulsifer. And I see family resemblances of Zara in our family. Showing that, that those tendencies and characteristics have come down through. All right, now, I had a, a um, brother, Henry Christiansen, in our ward, who's also, his wife was a descendant of Zara Pulsifer. And he said, uh, told me, he says, I have something to be interested in and that you might, be, might find it to be very helpful. He says that I have a chart here that goes back to uh, Charlemagne. And um, he says, uh, you want, may want it, and so I, I grabbed that. I knew I was already a descendant of Charlemagne through uh, Dad's line, but not through Mother's line. I didn't know that. Well, I got it. He, he typed this up. This is a chart, and I'm going to pass this around so you can see it. And, uh, and I have also a um, pedigree chart and a family group sheets going back farther than that to Alfred the Great. And then going back farther than that, clear back to Odin, the king of the Vikings. Now the temple work has been done for these men already. But Odin the Viking, I thought, was a mythical uh, uh, person that did, didn't really live. But he did. And we're the 15th, you and I, Ron, are the 51st great-grandson of Odin. And it goes back two generations past him to 165 A.D. That's closer to the, prop, uh, to the, uh, the Savior than we are to the prophet, Joseph Smith. 165, and the temple work has been done. And um, I have here, and you can look at them, and I have um, also in the, in the, 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 the pamphlets or the folders that I'm going to hand out, I have a family group sheet and a pedigree chart of those men. It might be interesting to you. I'll pass this around, Ron, and I've got the notes there, and I'm taking it on back. Now, it doesn't make us any better, but it's interesting to know that uh, those, um, those men are our ancestors. I had a, an incident in the temple the other day, and it was on Wednesday. I was having to be in the Baptist font. We were baptizing for a whole stack of cards. And here come one Samuel Packard, born in the 1610s. I told the lady, I said, I know that, that his work has been done because he's my direct ancestor. He's the one who came across the, the ocean with Elizabeth um, stream, I think it was, on the, uh, the ship Diligence. 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 And, uh, and he was born in 1610. And so this same person, his work is being done over and over again, many times. Yeah, we did, we did his ceilings in Johannesburg or somewhere. Yeah, I, knew, um, I knew it had been done. But I'll pass know? this around. This is um, one of them. He's had all these people doing all the work. And, um, yes. <laughs> Now, we have, uh, I have a sister, Frida Child, doing uh, research work for us. And she checks the IGI. Now, you know what the IGI? That's International uh, Genealogical Index. And it's a record of all the temple activity that's been done in this dispensation within all the temples. And it's 99% accurate or complete up to the, about the middle of March of last year, 93. And they're working fast on it to get it finished out. You get all of 93 in. Now, I'm, I'm going to pass this around to show you what she is able to accomplish. I give her a blank sheet, of, uh, and I generally put in, uh, have typed in, the information that I have on that particular person. And as you see what she has found on this particular one, I got this there last week. Then I go and enter that information into my record, and then if there's anything left over, like a ceiling for marriages, then I submit that uh, to be done. Now I'll pass this around. Um, these are some what she's able to find out. Um, this is some showing you how, how much she, information she's, she's able to get. Now, <clears throat> the big problem 
in our research, she gives me um, the uh, um, document, document uh, the, in, it's necessary what the church has. She gives me uh, um, a, the, a copy of the, um, all the work that has been done. Now the pitiful thing about it, this shows how much duplication has been done. For instance, I have here, um, I, gotta get to, I can see big things but not little things. I have here where it's uh, uh, Isabel, Princess of France, and she was born in, in 12, uh, I got the exact date, 1242. I've got a whole page of Isabel, and um, I got uh, part of another page, all of the same person. And the work has all been done sometime, several times over. Ron? Several times over. Now, th uh, this duplication is not just that one. It's, uh, I have here a whole page of another one. Just showing you the top. So we have to look through them and find the one that fits our need the best. If we find one that has an exact date on it, a birth, or a, a more complete birthplace, we're going to use that. Here's one of Matilda. It um, shows you a little bit. Um, and then she's, here's a marriage record. And sometimes we'll have three and four uh, items on the marriage record. She finds all of this. But now you notice, you'll notice in there the dates that the ordinance work is done. It's rather interesting. Biggest, we, since the computers come in and they've got the IGI filled out a little bit better, most of the dates when the temple work has been done is 90, 91, 92, and part of 93. Practically all of it. And a lot of it is in the temples that we've been sending names to, your names. A lot of it's been sent there. Well, so are I assume. Going to stop, ever stop doing, keep doing them? I mean, don't they know that they're duplicating? Well, they, I, I watch that. I don't do it again. I only do those that. Well, it's on my mind. Okay, thanks. Now this one here, uh, it's got a 92 date on it. Now the you notice I, I circled in red this one, uh, showing the one that I picked, even though it's a duplicate. Here's another one. So the problems that we have. Here's a Peter York. I got a page and a half of Peter York. All done over and over again. And um, it's, it's pitiful how much uh, wasted effort is being done. Uh, now, if they haven't accepted it after 15 times. Yeah, this is being baptized time and time again. Like that Samuel Packard. We baptized him again just last Wednesday. And I know it's been done time and time again before. Now, <clears throat> I sent this down to you, da Bob, to the Dallas Temple. And this is, a, this is my backup that I sent down to your place. Now, I go down to the archives. I'll take a, a group of um, family group sheets like this. And I'll generally take about uh, maybe uh, 50, 50 names, or 20, 40 to 50 names, according to what I think is needed down at that particular temple. And I take this down to the library and process it there at the library through on what we call a temple ready. And I'm going to send this around so you can look at the... Uh, now you'll notice the, uh, the temple ready computer also checks the IGI even after Sister Child has checked it. And it'll print out, if it finds where the work has been done, it'll give me the dates on it. You'll see where I marked them in red. I print it, it'll give me the dates on it so I can get that into the computer and so we won't do it again. And the computer will not let those, where the date is given here, it will not let them go through for Temple Ready. This is, uh, uh, this is uh, fairly new because the church has just finished completing all the records so we should not have near the duplication we've had in the past. No, it's good. Okay, the fruit dip is next to the fruit bowl, and the, now, the vegetable dip is two. The, the duplication side. won't happen here as much. I think it's, it's cut way down because the IG is getting IGI is getting far more perfect. Now, my the computer, the computer will. When I put a, a name into the computer, and I've got nearly seventeen thousand names in there now. Uh, some of them on the package line, some on the, the uh, Carter line. And um, so there's about nearly 17,000 in there. Yet the computer, and I've got a good fast computer, the computer will sign a number to that name. It's called a, a RIN number, a record 
Yeah. Index. Let's see. Record index number. 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 Yeah. Record index number. And that number stays with it as long as it's in my computer. The marriage is given a Marin or a marriage record index number, and and it's that goes in, and that is given right back of the name that um, is given part of the name. So I can enter that name in it. Now when I put that when I put that that number in the computer right just that fast in a matter of a couple of seconds pulls out that name and it's a marvel to me how it can do it so fast with all those names it has to go through but it'll pull it up in about two seconds that name with all the information that I, that I have entered in the notes the whole bit and uh, also it will um, it will I can get a, a pedigree chart from that person for, or from any person I want any person it'll give a pedigree chart as many generations as I want back now this one I have five generations now I ask for five generations you just put in the name you don't have to have the country or anything no I just I, when I put, first enter it in I put the, all the information that's available his birth date and his, his, his birth place his name, everything is accurate as I can get it. Now I have to put in, I have to have a birth date and a place of birth. I have to have those two things plus his name or the computer will not accept it. It'll do it on that. Uh -huh. It'll do it on that. You don't have to have the country they came from. If I have it, if I can put England, for instance, and I can just put the word England, it will accept it. Uh, and I can put an about date. Now we can figure, estimate dates. We generally figure around 25 to 30 years per generation. If I know that the son was born at a certain time, I can figure about 25 years to 30 years uh, before that the father was born. I can, and that's generally the practice that can be used. Now, I have discontinued using a Mr. and Mrs. at the end of the line because uh, it leaves us just a little bit of confusion. But it, it did allow us to seal a child to parents if we had a Mr. and Mrs. there. In other words, we could give a name and a number and everything and process them through as a Mr. and Mrs. And we know that their child would be their son, Mr. Uh, uh, like a John Jones. We could seal him to his parents then. And that gives, that completes that one particular out. Now I'm going to pass these out here and you'll find some blanks in your folder. It's, um, well, these are, these are blank sheets here. These are blank family group sheets. Now, and I've also got some blank pedigree charts that you can see. Now, you noticed on one of those, there's uh, the word submitted. When I submit a name for family, uh, for family uh, temple ready, a, a name there, my computer automatically puts the word submitted in the place where that uh, ordinance work is to be done. And so when my computer will not then allow it to go through the second time, if that word submitted is there. And so that you won't have a duplication, you know, of effort. And that has been my problem so much before, but it's, I'm getting that ironed out now. Yeah. Now, my uh, computer will print out, my computer will print out every person that does not have a complete line of ordinance work done. And it'll give me a complete list on it. And I'm right now, I'm in the Carter line, taking that list off, and you can see, and I've crossed it with a check. When I check that name out, I check it out, here it is. Some of these have been done, but there have been no ceilings to parents or to marriage. Some of most of them, no ceilings to parents or to marriage. But a lot of the other ordinances have been done, like baptism and the endowments. And so I've been, taking off this I've been uh, going through them and I have uh, been submitting those to sister child to check to see if the work has been done and she's finding a lot of it where it has been done and that helped me a lot and that a lot of that work is from that source and so then I enter that in and then if there are those that don't have the work done any part of it like sealing of marriages or the sealing of a child to a parent I'll submit it now maybe all the other work has been done on that family except this one child has not been sealed to a parent. It may have seven or eight children. The computer will go through that and they'll check every person on that and you'll see the computer going right for, like that. Checking every person in that family and then it'll light on that one where it needs an ordinance done. And then it'll allow me to go through 
send that that record through the temple for have that child sealed to the parents. And uh, you'll notice that if you on that down to Dallas, some of them have only maybe a child sealed to a parent. That's about all that's needed. And the work is done. And that completes that family. All done. And actually, the bottom line, brethren, is to see that all the end or temple ordinances for exaltation are done for every person. I'm not too concerned too much in if I have an exact date or an exact place of, 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 of birth. I'm only concerned primarily to see that that work is the work is done for that person. But the, they have to have a place in the name though, so you have to... You have to have that. And now I can't put all of England. I've got to put England and that, that puts a problem. I'm going to send in a, a, a or call them down to the, the computer headquarters that has to do with that program that they will not accept all of England because I don't know whether the dad is all of England or not. The son might have been of England. Now I assume the dad was all of England too. But if I put the word all, the computer will not accept it. And so it, it's too bad. It's that way, but because I assume that the child, that the dad was from England, if the son was from England. Now, practically all of our ancestors are from England, New England, and the New England states. Practically, all, biggest percent of them. The Carter Line came over here in the 1600s. The Packard Line came over in the 1600s and settled in Massachusetts and Maine and New Hampshire and, and Vermont and that area through there. So we have a lot of crossovers in the marriages. We have. I found that sometimes as much as uh, 10 to 20 percent of the uh, times the same person is found in both lines. And that created a, a lot of duplication of efforts because at first I didn't realize that and so when I got to the Carter line I sent that name through again and Bud, Bud was getting the same name twice and they, he said, they said I, I know I've done this person before well that was the problem and uh, so and now I check every card that I get for instance these cards that Joanne gave me I'll check those in both lines to make sure that it's in, recorded in both sides if that person is in both lines. We have a lot of it. We find the same thing with Walker and Patrick. Yeah, they're, out there from New England. And now everybody and their dog is working on our lines in, in England and, and such. Now you'll find that in our, we're doing now uh, those uh, medieval names that we're doing a lot of them now. The farthest back that the computer will give us, and as far as date is concerned, is a thousand years, a thousand A.D. But if that person is before that, like in seven or eight hundred, it'll give us the information on him. All we need is a name, and then so we're doing getting a lot of information back in the uh, even the five, six hundred, seven hundreds, and we're doing those now, and I'm finding where a lot of the work has not been done, and that's been the case all the way through in what I've been doing, finding that we thought that. And so and so is doing the work, but we find out that it's not been done. We're finding hundreds and hundreds of names where the ordinance work has not been done, and it, that's that's the bottom line of what we're trying to do. Now, I've got I've got here. Dee, why don't you pass these over to the other side? Okay. Right here. Thank you. Uh, now I've got uh, folders for each one. In this folder, I've got a, 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 an article that I, I've brought up identifying your ancestors. It talks a little bit about what they, what some of the things to do. It, it, it identifies the ancestral file, the, the IGI or the International Genealogical Index, and the Family History Library catalog. And it tells about each of them. It gives a short pedigree that I have assigned to each one of you a certain pedigree um, that is unique to it. It's, it's, it's not, I haven't duplicated. And I've read, I've highlighted where you can possibly do some research work. In other words, at the end of the line. Or I may have the first name of the wife, but I don't have her last name. And that's some, involves some research. Now, you might be search wherever you can to get the, the information. I've also put in here some blank pedigree charts and some blank family group uh, sheets. And I'm going to pass, this is your pass. Each one of them is different. Each one is different. No duplication. No duplications. Each one is different. And Jay and um, Vaughn, Vaughn will, I'll get Vaughn's to him. Oh, I'm glad you chose this one because Wendell's got... And, uh, and pass this back to Don. Yeah, that's... 
Pass that to Donna. And this goes down to Jay. Really do, really do, and just to study that. This is the really do. This is the really do. And um, yeah, D, this is a really do, not just for practice. Well, this is this is it. This is, I, this is this is assignment. I don't have the information, or I wouldn't be asking for it. Ron, this is yours. I think there's two there, one underneath it. I don't know. Bill, where are you? That's the source, Bill. I don't know, but I get twice as much as the rest. You got the D here. Hey, wait a minute. No, one of them. One goes to Bud. One's Bud. And um, you go into you go into your stake center into your library, they can really help you. Get and learning. And once you get into it, uh, where, did I get to it, Jay? Yeah, we have mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Once you get into it, I don't know, do you want them back, uh, D, or do you want them to submit them to their own family? Well, I want them, like, at least to have a record of them back. I know you that. can submit them if you want. But, Barbara, this is yours. Do what you can, Barbara. You can the same as Bernie. Uh, and uh, Cleo, you follow the there with Beth. You were, now, as Bob said, you can go to your your stake center, which ten to one will have your uh, your computer set up with the IGI. It's a little bit more cumbersome than down to the library in Salt Lake, but uh, I've worked in them. I've worked in both. I do mostly down to the library because I can do it a lot faster. Now, um, Now, I'm not going to take any much more time now, but I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, it's very important. My patriarchal blessing gives me the charge in this direction. It mentions that I will be um, involved in genealogy. Beth and I, when we were just teenage, young teenagers, 12 and 13 years old, went to Salt Lake and were there when did baptisms for the dead. And uh, Archibald Bennett had researched some of the work for us, and we were down there and did some of the work even at that age. And so when, Bert, when Benny passed away, and he had sent me several sheets, and he sent, I think he sent all of us things, and that's what I started with. And I started out with a typewriter, and one of my wife carries typewriter, and I found out I'd make mistakes. I'm very grateful I had two years typing in school, but because that helped me tremendously. But uh, I'd make mistakes and white them out, and I'd go back and make a mistake, the same mistake again, and finally I'd get to the point where I was climbing the walls, but then when the first computers come out, I bought one from Radio Shack. It was a little 64 um, size, you know, and it, the church didn't have a, a, a program for it that fit that. They had a, a one that fit the IBM compatible. So I sold that one and bought an IBM compatible, one of the slow ones, an 88. And uh, then I got started and I found out, it didn't take me long to see that the church technological program was really the thing. I'm sure that it was inspired to come forth. And it's like one of the brethren stated, the computer system come forth specifically for the genealogical work of the church. And so, and I'm convinced of this. And so, and I, every time a new version of that PATH program come out, I got it. And I attended some classes down to the library uh, on how to use it until I could use it quite well. And I feel quite comfortable with it now. And I, I feel that it, it's the way that we're going. Now, one of the brethren said that when the millennium uh, comes, industry and technology will be so advanced so fast, we won't even be, we can't even imagine what's going to happen. We can't even comprehend the things that will come out. And we have a thousand years for genealogy. May the Lord bless us as a family. I'm very grateful for being a part of this family. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Can I, can I ask you one question? Yes, go ahead. Uh, 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 do you have, does anybody in the family have a picture of uh, Forrest and Carter? No, I, 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 I don't. I don't. Just when they were babies. Just when they were babies. Yeah, Somebody's got family one. pictures of Forrest yeah. and Mom, yeah. Mom, Mom Forrest. Forrest. Forrest yes. But that's the only picture there was. Yeah. So you can't Carter really see much with that. No. Can I, I remember seeing Carter, baby Carter, Upstairs. in a... In a a uh, little something like a little Jay box on top of the um, on top of the dresser drawer in the bedroom upstairs in uh, in Napa. I remember seeing that. Mom saw that he had already passed away, of course. Jay's written a story about that. And then um, I, I saw that. So we could see nice what they like. I remember. Let me tell you something too. Mom told me told me this. She said that 
one night, a person appeared to her in, at the foot of her bed and woke her up. And, and Mom wanted to know, what are you doing there? He says, I have come for Carter. And she said, who are you? I am Forrest. And he was a grown man, looked like a grown man. I have come for Forrest, or Carter, I mean. And Mom tried to talk him out of it, couldn't. And she then said, she's taking what I'm not looking for. Taking what I'm not looking for. And a uh, short time after that, Carter passed away. He was only three weeks old. Yeah. <coughs> and Forrest was only, uh, it would have only been, what, a year or a little over a year? He was 19 months. Yeah. But he was a grown man. Well, in behalf of the family, we want to extend our sincere appreciations to Dee for all that he does. Uh, not everybody is capable or has the ability, time, or whatever to do genealogical work like Dee does. <coughs> and we really appreciate what he does and what he's doing. Joanne and I go down to the temple here. Never fails when we go in. We, we go there and ask for names under the deep Packard, and uh, there's always something there for us to do. Uh, one day, uh, my son Raymond and I went down with, with, with all of our grandchildren that were here, and uh, we done over 200 baptisms for the dead. And it was, it was just great. Good feeling. Well, that was between and, um, and the Yes, that's right. Levelins sent us a lot too. So between them, we keep busy. Uh, Bill, mm -hmm. can you just mention the finances on that issue? That if you want to donate, you just send the money to D and uh, make it D. out to the Samuel. I've been doing that, uh huh. Samuel Packard. Packard. By the way, it's costing about 30. Thirty-five dollars a week for Sister Child for the research. She's very, she's fast. The reason I stuck with her, I did have two research ladies, but Sister Child is going fast enough to solve. She was going, and I have approximately a little, just a shade over two thousand dollars in the fund. So. Okay, we need to move on. Uh, we would like to give Bernie a few minutes to let us know how he is coping with the situation there. None of us are getting any younger, and um, and I never thought of the time that we would come to these gatherings, uh, finding some of us in wheelchairs. It just wasn't it wasn't in the cards. We never we wouldn't think of those things, but but um, it's happening. And Bernie, would you come and visit with us for a moment? Do you want me to help you, Bernie? Uh, Russell, I trust you. Her legs are totally gone now. You know, Sarah's... You don't have much choice about where you go in this line. <laughs> 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 go where they shut up. No. Uh, I don't know where you want me to go, but don't, don't, don't send me home to teach you. Is that the way it is? Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Bernie, Bob, just, just mm -hmm. tilt the side and tilt that down just a hair. Okay. There's a handle back and back there, back, yeah. back and back. This Take it, it's tab. tight. But right here? Forward. This one? Yeah. It's tight. So we're that hard. I'm just getting the muscles back. All right, yeah. Loosen a little bit more. Are you kidding? You know, most people put the camera instead of the person. You might pick up the heads on that. Not the Packers. We might pick up the backs of the heads on that. Do you want to have a look at the heads on that? Do you want to have a look at the heads on that? Why don't you tell me to get short? Hey, I'm short enough. Well, am I in the way? No, I don't. Help there, but we Joanne, can I'll, I'll bet you that all these pictures have been having Talmadge and I in the picture. How's my hair? The back okay. of your head? <laughs> Probably. Okay. I'll go ahead and he can adjust it the way he wants to. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to do handle this the way I do in my missionary work. Uh, and we do in our missionary work. She's a stake missionary in our stake and she's the best stake missionary we have. Uh, I'm also involved in missionary work. And whenever I receive an assignment to speak in another stake or in state conference or at a uh, mission zone conference or something, 
I uh, always take her with me, and I take only a few moments and then give it to her, and they want to hear from her more than they do me, and she she has a tremendous impact in missionary work. She spoke at our last state conference, um, and she left an impression and an impact. I did not speak. Uh, an impression that that will have a lasting and permanent effect on um, members of the stake. It was 13 years ago <clears throat> I found myself racing through a raging fire in an effort to get all of our 10 or 11 children out of the house. And I recall it was pitch black of course, 1.30 in the morning stumbling over chairs, couches. Our home was a very large home and it was open. By that I mean these spaces you see here that are open instead of doors. We had large ones uh, two or three times as large as the three foot or four footer there. And I would race through and jump over furniture. All of the children were out but one and uh, Sarah and I were able to communicate through an open bedroom window. I remember crashing into fire. It would, it would be like opening the door of that old uh, old-fashioned furnace in our basement and trying to put your head in the furnace. You just can't survive it. And I would fall back. And the, to bring this to a close, the point of this experience was, I remember saying, as I was racing and falling in the dark and stumbling over, and jumping on a bed and reaching in the far corners. Dear God, if I ever needed a miracle, I need it now. As the months passed, I caught myself reading a story in the New Testament. John the Baptist was in prison. He was a cousin, second cousin to Jesus Christ. Jesus. And he sent his disciples to Christ, saying, basically, don't forget me. Christ sent the disciples back to John, instructed them to tell John, tell him of all that you see me do. Restoring the sight to the blind, healing the deaf, raising the dead, and teaching the gospel. <coughs> Tell that to John. And then he closed it by saying, and this is my message to myself and to all of us, to all of us, to Barbara and to all of our relatives, Jesus said to his disciples, then tell John, blessed is he that is not offended in me. And John wasn't spared. Lazarus was John wasn't. Little Rochelle wasn't. I read that and I thought about that. Why not? And I, be, I have become somewhat steeled. And now when I see people's problems, to me the greatest problems are unhappiness in marriages, abused children, quarreling children with parents, and lonely divorcees. If Sarah should be taken, it'll be 20 or 30 years, and then it doesn't matter. I have fixed my mind over the past few months. Your mind goes through all sorts of mental gymnastics, and I have fixed my mind I'm, I'm this way by nature. I, <clears throat> I guess it's because the attorneys do this. They quickly look at worst case scenario and then prepare themselves. It's kind of like a military officer going into battle. And so I have fixed my mind to uh, deal with um, this uh, and, and tend to Sarah uh, for the next 25 or 30 years. And when I say worst case, I mean... Uh, Maybe it, maybe worst case would be if she passed away. 
Uh, maybe worst case would be if she were a, a total vegetable, uh, not able to communicate, but still live. I'm not sure. We haven't resolved that in, in our minds, or, and maybe we don't need to. But I have fixed my mind, and I'm prepared to go for 25 or 30 years and uh, care for her and tend to her. And the real key <coughs> is to do all of this without any complaint in your heart. And so far, I have been able to tend to her as an infant and enjoy it if I can at the time remove from my mind the reason we're going through this. In other words, that she has a terminal illness. <coughs> if I can cast that out of my mind for the moment, then it's much like tending to a baby, which always was fun. I mean, any parent who has a little baby and gets to bathe the baby and put a diaper on the baby and comb the baby's hair and put powder on the baby and wash the baby's face, it's kind of enjoyable, especially if your mind is fixed in such a way that it's not going to come to an end. I see her in a wheelchair, and that's as far as I see her. I've been able to deal with it in response to Bill's assignment. How are we coping? I'll let her tell about herself and about her physical condition. I've been able to deal with it because I have decided it's easier to um, deal with the positive. You can call it denial, but it's dealing with the positive. In other words, we're going to turn this around. We still have hope. Miracles do happen all the time, not only in the scriptures, but they still do happen. And so, it's not over, and in fact, as some illnesses go, it will not be over until it's over, because we have learned of cases where it appeared to be totally over, and it isn't. And some have recovered, and some have stabilized. Somebody could argue and say, if it stabilizes, that is difficult. But if it's our lot, we accept it, and without complaint. And I don't mind because she's my sweetheart, and we have enjoyed our past six months more than any prior six months. We were sweethearts, now we're true lovers. We each depend on the other. We each wait for the other. This morning, it uh, took us an hour and a half to get her all bathed and powdered up and dressed up and doing and then undoing and then redoing. We were doing a lot of experimenting. <laughs> we do a lot of things wrong and have to redo it. And we found a lot of shortcuts. Don't send us any clothes because we know exactly what kind of clothes is easy to put on. <laughs> and poor Sarah, her arms are short. And it makes it very difficult for me. <laughs> oh, gee. And then in the nighttime. You know, we went for the first 25 years without sleeping a full night. <laughs> on account of those children. And now, we're in it again. <laughs> Last night, I was up three, uh, f uh, four times helping her with her bathroom needs. She can't tend to it by herself. Her legs get tangled up. She cannot move one leg off the other. I help her untangle the legs. And to do that, I have to get way down under the covers, get my head down there sometimes. <laughs> And she complains about her toenails getting wrapped around the blankets. And I say, I say, you need to clip them. She can't clip them. I clip them. The children forget to clip them. She gets a hold of me when she wants to roll. Her shoulders and her head can roll at this point. The rest of her body won't. So I will lap one leg over the other ahead of time. <clears throat> And then she'll get a hold of me. She used to get a hold of my garments and then tell me to roll. <laughs> Nearly pulled my garments right off. So now she gets a hold of my shoulder and I pull her and she follows suit. Then her, <clears throat> her right arm gets trapped under her. And that becomes a nightmare because then I have to roll back. She rolls back <laughs> and loses her arm. But then she, we, we've been counterproductive. <laughs> 
<laughs> you got to realize that Bernie, with all of his attributes, one of them is not mechanical aptitude. <laughs> Mechanical aptitude. No, we're not very good mechanics. <laughs> but we, we go through it a lot of fun, a lot of laughing, and sometimes it's to cover the tears, I guess, because we, <clears throat> we're not down about it, and we are almost always upbeat. The only time we get a bit not down, because I, in, in all my married life, since I've been married to Sarah, nearly 30 years in next month it'll be 30 nearly 31 years next month it'll be 31 years i i never experienced depression hardly ever discouragement i i never get down i never get depressed because we have too much excitement at home <coughs> but <coughs> when she discovers when we discovered that there is something now that she could not do before um when we catch ourselves having to purchase another machine, including especially the biggest one, not expense-wise, but statement-wise, was the uh, wheelchair itself. That, that was a devastating decision. <coughs> and when this sort of thing happens, then sometimes at night she'll cling to me and say, I don't want to leave. And then it becomes difficult. And, and that's about the only time we experience it. Other than that, we just go right on. We've had a good time together. She's an absolute angel. As I look back, I could never have chosen a better woman to be a wife and an affectionate sweetheart, a lover, if you will, and a mother to my family. And I so regret it if she leaves me. She's the one that always locks the door, the bedroom door at night. <laughs> She's the one that is quick to counsel our children when, <clears throat> when they're teenagers and they're approaching the most critical decisions of their life. She was a brilliant woman. She was valedictorian in her school. <laughs> Beautiful woman. She ran for Miss Texas. Almost won it. She says she got cheated out of it. <laughs> you notice she's become more beautiful, so I'm not sure her wife. Maybe it's because, I don't know. I will close my part by saying this. Somebody down in Texas, one of my friends, asked if I was angry at God. I said to her, I confronted her right on the spot. I said, how can you ask that? In the first place, I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare try that. Secondly, it's totally against my nature. No matter what obstacle he placed in front of us, we're expected to get over it and without complaint. <laughs> without complaint in our heart. Even in our mind, our heart. We have to be above that. And uh, I'm grateful for, I mean, I'm not playing on words, I'm not being sensational. I can truly say we have been so eminently blessed. And I hasten to say, when I pled for that miracle, I've thought about it every day since then, including that day, the great miracle surely did happen because only one child was taken. And if Sarah should be taken, that's not a curse, not a condemnation. Who knows, maybe mother is. I'm not going to say playing tricks or games, but maybe she has a hand in on this. Maybe there's some reason. Now Sarah says, uh, eternity is a long time. She's not needed there. She's needed here. She doesn't want to go, and I don't want her to go. And Esther Packard, she doesn't have that kind of authority or power. And I say, you didn't know Esther Packard. <laughs> She didn't. Uh, here's here's the real. What do you call this? My wife. No. Uh, here's uh, she never met mother. That's why I'm afraid to die. <laughs> here's the uh, the quiz. I forgot what you call this. Hang in there, Sarah. This kind of a quiz question. Um, 
<clears throat> how do you, how can this possibly be? This is the quiz question, because it happened with Sarah. How can a Sarah uh, meet her father, her father-in-law, my dad, and him not meet her and not know it? It happened. Not because his back was turned or anything like that. Well, to bring it short, she saw him for the first time at his funeral. So she did get to meet Forrest Packard, uh, and it was at the funeral. She got to speak to him on the phone, and that's before she was my wife, but she enjoyed talking to him. So how am I coping? I'm doing great. We're happy. If it gets worse, I'll, I'll, I'll tackle that. Because I have learned this, and Barbara Darling, I have learned step by step. Like I told Sarah, she had never heard this. I don't think I'm the author of this. I said, it's like eating an elephant. You just do it one bite at a time. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah. The yard is hard. <clears throat> but, uh, step by step, each thing comes. And now, later on tonight, I'm going to bring our lift in and transfer her from something. Because when we get to your house tomorrow, I want to show you a couple of few things. See, I picked up Jay uh, behind his wheelchair tonight to put him in his place, picked him up from behind, picked up the back. That way you can put him in a real tight position. She will not be able to do that. There's a difference between her and me. Among other differences, one of them is... Uh, I would get upset at that. Strength, physical muscle. And it makes a big difference, Barbara. I, I can lift her fairly easy. You can't lift his leg without trouble. I love you all, and I'm doing fine. And here's Sarah, and she'll tell you how she's doing. I didn't know I was going to be on the program, but I should have known, shouldn't I? Uh, uh, on the way up here, I started crying because I said, uh, one of the hard parts is all the farewells. You know, you get right down to it, you know it, and I know it, and this is probably the last time I'll see many of you on this side. And uh, it's hard because your mind is raced with memories, and all of all the good times, it's, uh, you know, I think of Marona's farewell speech, and, and I, I can identify with that a little bit. What would you say, you know? And I guess you just say the same things he said, is to, you know, stay close to the Lord. And remember, as they did in conference, the, the things that are most important. I know most of you are doing that. But, uh, yeah, the thing that would make me the happiest is if any anything that I did or said would uh, make you in your heart resolve to a little, a little closer to the Lord because I know that will make you happier than I want. The ha thing that makes me the happiest is to see you happy. And uh, and the same thing with my children. I advise them, I said, will you please, please, if I'm not here, will you please? live close to the Lord and never disobey Him. Um, I guess uh, in state covers I gave a talk and I may repeat a few of the ideas that I had there because I felt like that they were uh, what the Lord wanted me to say at the time and one of it was to share with them and with you what I'm learning in this experience. This is an interesting experience and I've come to learn since the fire that time and learn again now that life really wasn't meant to be a bed of roses. I thought it was. <laughs> I really thought up until our fire that if you live the commandments and you do basically try to do what the Lord tells you to do and I was almost prideful in these thoughts that you're going to get all the righteous blessings and everything will turn out right and that you won't have any problems because you're trying to be obedient. Not so. Uh, uh, not so at all. Uh, this life was meant, I've learned, to be uh, a time for us to have experiences and for us to prove faithful. And that we should be grateful almost uh, in our heart. That we should be grateful, not almost, that we have a chance to show the Lord that we'll be faithful in all times and all seasons. And that we should be grateful, even if it's hard. Because how much more can we show the Lord that we love Him if, if we can do it when it's hard? If it's real easy, 
it doesn't have as much meaning. Just as, as our children sacrifice to give us a gift or to do something special for us, but we know their sacrifice has been great, then, our, uh, then we know the bounds of their love is greater. And uh, so it's all right if, if we have a, a heart challenge. Uh, in fact, it's an opportunity to show our children and to each other that we will, and to especially to the Lord, that we will be faithful in all times and all seasons. Another thing I'm learning, that there's dimensions of love out there that I didn't know existed. I thought I had the most wonderful marriage in the world, and I guess... I mean, I really thought that. I looked around and I was, uh, I made a lot of comparisons and I just figured it out. <laughs> and I said, yes, I do have the most wonderful man in the world. But I don't have not married to a man anymore, I'm married to an angel. And there's a dimension of love there that I never even knew existed. That I am experiencing and that he is experiencing. And the bonding thing is, uh, uh, is another degree of, if you will, a celestial. Uh, I already thought we were in the celestial kingdom, but I guess this is exaltation or something. But uh, it's another dimension of love that I didn't know existed. And I guess it's a combination of service and desperation too. And uh, I don't know, living closer to the Lord where the Spirit is with you. And so your ability to love increases. I don't know, I haven't analyzed all the reasons. I'm just saying that if you could vicariously experience this in a way, and just for all of you will be in our shoes at one time. Everyone, every couple here will be a widow or a widow. The time will come. I mean, not unless some miracle happens and you go in a plane crash and go together, but most every one of you will be suffering the loneliness and the things that uh, we are possibly facing. It would be nice if we could learn all these lessons and then get well, wouldn't it? <laughs> but uh, another thing that uh, I'm learning, and that is uh, a little more about what it means to be one with the Father. He wasn't the scripture says, "And be one with me, and I with thee, and we, and we will." Um, I can't remember it exactly right now, but. Uh, we're supposed to be one with the Father as they are one. But, you know, I didn't understand that as much as I do now because Bernie and I are becoming absolutely one. We're Siamese twins. We breathe in and out together. We can't go anywhere without each other. I have to go to work with him because I have to go to the bathroom. And you know when you have to go to the bathroom, you have to have someone take you there, that you can't be gone very long at a time. And, uh, but it's been a blessing. and. It's been a, a wonderful experience to be with him 24 hours a day for so long. And it's been a wonderful opportunity to see uh, these... You know, we pray for these Christian qualities. Help me be strong, help me endure, help me be patient, help me do all this in our prayers, and then we get up and go to sleep. And then we're given those opportunities to develop those very qualities that we pray for. And then we try to pray them away. Uh, so, I don't know, I just, uh, I guess I just want to again pray, pay tribute to the wonderful, wonderful man that I'm married to and the wonderful family he comes from. And I, I don't feel like either one of us could do this alone. We feel your support. And I, that sounds so generic to say that, but I've said many times that I feel like Moses when they were holding his hands up during the battle and if he dropped his hands the uh, armies would lose and if they held his hands up they were on to victory and I you know really feel like you're holding my hands up many times and there is a uh, spirit that has come upon me uh, from the Holy Ghost because I recognize it and it's a feeling of peace and of course the devil can't imitate that it's, you know it comes from the Lord and it's, uh, it's the ability to not go into depression over this. It's the ability to 
seize the day and to see, still continue to be happy. And uh, it's a, a blessing that is, you know, from the Holy Ghost and it's from our prayers and your prayers. And so don't get, quit praying for me. Just the initial thing I know, is, but I, I need your prayers every day. Because on my own, I can't handle it by myself. But with the Lord, we can do it. And we can do it with families like this. And my family at home. And some of you have just been particularly kind. and Lots of telephone calls. And, and lots of sympathy. And we appreciate it. And we love every one of you. Right. Amen. Could you take give it back to her? Sarah, could you uh, tell us about your missionary efforts? We'd like to hear your successes in, in this and how it's happening. In this particular situation? Uh -huh. Since you had your... Uh, it's interesting. You know, when you're going to die, you can get people's attention. <laughs> so, I said, I've always been an opportunist at heart. I've already got my funeral planned with Man's Search for Happiness in it. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm going to do something. I'm going to get it all planned just right. But uh, <laughs> if I get them at their ear, we'll get them there listening. I'm going to take advantage of it. But um, oh, so I go to my friends, like one of them, you know, Sarah, is there anything I can do to help you? I said, you know, Debbie, the only thing that you can do to help me is to take the missionary lessons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I said, you know, and I just, I just, I said, you know, all my life, I said, I felt I don't want to go to my grave, feel like I have failed you, <laughs> and that I have never introduced the church to you, so will you please take, and I get a commitment out of them too, you know, and then they call me on the phone and they say, uh, uh, they said, I'm scared to call you. You're going to set up an appointment for me? Yeah. <laughs> she, has brought, she has brought a lot of people. She's the young man that some of you met tonight that just got off a mission. Her own, our own son-in-law, she brought him in. She brought uh, three or four others that I'm thinking of that were young people. And uh, she's helped bring some adults in. And she is very bold. Very yeah. brave. brave. <laughs> you know? Respectful. You know, I have never, never, I used to say, well, I've got to do missionary work, and I'd dial the phone to invite them in the house, and then, Heavenly Father, please, make them don't answer the phone, <laughs> so I can do my duty, but they won't have to do it. <laughs> and I was so grateful if they didn't answer the phone, you know, because I was frightened to do it. I was just so afraid. And then one day, a member of another church came over to my house and, quote, witnessed to me, invited me to her church. And I, I was felt flattered that she was interested in inviting me to her church. I was a little amused by it, but certainly not offended. And had I not been such a stalwart Mormon, I would have been curious enough to go. Hmm. And that uh, I realized that you're not going to offend anybody. And so my approach lots of times is to just tell them, I think you could be a wonderful Mormon right off the bat. <laughs> um, I guess the last one that was baptized, the first time I ever saw him, he was over with another friend at our house. And I said, you know, I just have this strong feeling, the first time I ever saw him, that you will become a member of our church if you'll just take the lessons. What? <laughs> well, <laughs> will you take the lessons? Will you be willing to? I can. We can have them set up tomorrow if you'd like to come. Why not? <laughs> Now he's on a mission. <laughs> so, uh, this is all yeah. And then we had a little fireside at Christmas time. We had about 15 non-members. And one of them came up to me and she said, I felt something special here. I mean, it's just right in here in my heart. Did you feel it too? <laughs> oh yes, oh yes. And then another one, uh, we were both in tears and uh, there was a young girl and she said, uh, it feels like your heart is coming out and touching my heart. And uh, what is this feeling? I've never felt this feeling in your home. You know that it's different than I've felt before. Can you explain to me about it? It's got to be something about your religion. So, I don't know, I give... We love the Lord and, and hopefully that we can live so the Spirit will always be there so that they can feel that Spirit 
and ask us. So that's the best kind of way missionary work I do, but I get a little more bold now. <laughs> Who's going to get mad at me? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just, some have asked uh, in quietness how, how she's doing. And so I'm going to close our part and pass it to Bill, but let me just, some want to know, and then we're, we're all in this together, we're family. The doctor, when he met us six months ago, she was diagnosed six months and one week ago, said, well, I met him and, and, and I said, what, what treatment can we get? What can we do? He said, there's no treatment, just get her will ready. And I said, uh, how much time? And he said, and I say, I thought it was two years, two and a half years, she thought it was two years, so we're still not sure. I said, how much time from now to wheelchair? And he, this was uh, six months ago. <coughs> he said in June, and he stopped and figured it, and then he said in, in about June of next year, meaning 1994, <coughs> which is three months, two months from now, three months from now. She's been it for four months. When your body goes down, finally it goes down to a point where you're at um, sustenance level, and then you, you're in more trouble, and then finally that wears out, and finally you're in big trouble. The illness started in her left foot, started up, it, it, it become foot drop, no strength in the ankle, moved on up, started in the right foot, <clears throat> it's in both foot, the left foot is totally useless, the right foot has, uh, the right leg has some strength in it, <clears throat> it's moved on up, I, uh, in November, Bob and Talmadge took us to Israel, and I wanted to pay tribute to them for that marvelous mm -hmm. blessing and trip for Sarah, and we discussed long and hard, can this wait till the month of March? January and February are filled up for both of us, can it wait till March? We all decided we really shouldn't take that chance, and I'm telling you now, if we pick her up on her feet, slack off a split second, she's right to the floor. She could not make the trip at all now. On that trip, she was able to walk the full length of the airplane by holding on to the seats as she walked back to go to the restroom. It would stand there for a while. She went on the trip great. But that's gone now. It has reached up into her diaphragm. She coughs like... <coughs> and sometimes, including in conference today, she got into a bit of a coughing spell, but it's not really coughing. It causes some anxiety because it makes you pretty nervous because that's what takes them out. It, the diaphragm or the heart finally <laughs> precipitates their, their expiration. It's come from her diaphragm up into her shoulders now, and her arms are heavy. She doesn't have the grip. When I used to lift her to transfer her from, say, this seating position into a wheelchair, I, it would be a bear hug. She would wrap tightly around my neck, and now she can't do that. Her arms will slip. Furthermore, if I do it now and just really cinch up tight because she can't cinch up tight, it's become just unbearably painful to her. We all forget that our frame, our skeletal frame, is held together by tissue. And her tissue is diminishing and her, her rib cage is bruised. It bruises her rib cage every time I would lift her. her. I'm lifting up, her hips and legs are pulling down and it's literally stretching a frame that has little tissue holding it together and as it gets in here then it'll either start up or up, start up into her neck or down into her arms or both and uh, that's the scary part because she has felt uh, this uh, twitching fluttering just under her chin and that's when the voice starts to to go out we're of the opinion that if this isn't arrested she'll be able to speak up to the point of death because it's already in the chest cavity. See, the diaphragm is really supposed to go after. <clears throat> the diaphragm is supposed to really go after your voluntary muscles. Of, uh, then you're supposed to start on the involuntary muscles. But we're getting the diaphragm compromising, which means you're really a blessing from Uncle Lyle. I'd rather go out talking. <laughs> so. Yeah. And, the last word. Yeah, she wants to have the last word. She usually gets it. She's bright <laughs> and <coughs> witty and quick-witted. But the scary part, um, that we have artificial legs, as you'll know, Barbara. It's these wheels. She calls them her wheels. We don't have artificial arms. 
and it's and it's sad when their arms and hands and 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 they do go out just like her her left leg is like a like a dead fish any way you turn it you flop and if it happens to the hands then it's a sad one a lot of work she i don't know what she'll do she says she won't take a tracheotomy that's through here to help them swallow and uh because you know they lose their ability breathe breathe yeah, yeah breathe the gastro tube is to help them feed I'm guessing she'll take it. She says she won't. We'll watch and see, and we're going to have a good time anyway, okay? Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Did you want to move her over here? We're going to move her over here. Listen, I need some help. Uh, Jay, what do you want done? He needs to go. Well, let's move he him over there. He needs to be shifted in his chair just so they can get in another room. Oh, do you want us to move these chairs? Uh, or Russell, if you could help me, and then we'll help Jay. <laughs> Bring that right here. Watch that course. See, this is, you always like roller coasters. <laughs> Just hope they don't break. <laughs> Okay, thanks, uh, Bernie and, and uh, Sarah. It was very faith-promoting to all of us. And, uh, but um, before I make any more comments pertaining to that, I'd like to hear from Barbara and Jay. Uh, so we'll shift Jay over here. Just swing the camera. Or let's just... Uh, he needs to be strong and lift him and put him in another position because it hurts. He's yeah. miserable. Does he need to be out of the chair? Well, that might be the next step. Would you want to be just shifted in your chair or do you want to lay down? Okay. Shifted in his chair just so that he can Let's move him to another position. Let's move him out of Okay. Does that feel better? Is that right? Okay. Let's put Cleo in the wheelchair and I'll take her place. Okay. Where's Cleo? Cleo's on my. She's here, honey. She's right here. Is she in front of the camera too much? A little bit. Cleo, move the wheelchair. Move the wheelchair. Here we go. Here. Cleo, this one. Cleo, right. Okay, you're fine. Gosh, I'm so grateful for Bernie and Sarah. I've never talked to them on the phone. Where I haven't come away encouraged and uplifted and been able to say to myself, I can do it. If Bernie can do it, I can do it. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> maybe Bernie will lose Sarah. But I will have Jay. <laughs> at least for another period. And the best way I can describe this experience is to, it's probably the greatest bitter sweet experience of my entire life. It is uh, it's anguish and it is very sad but <clears throat> I have never developed such love and appreciation and complete devotion he is totally dependent upon others and on me. And uh, I have been served all my life. And he has served me. And now I have got this opportunity to be able to serve him in a way. And you know, when you serve someone so much, you just love them so much. You'll find this in the church or wherever you go in your life. When the people that you serve are those that you love the most. Now, I do not know, and I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart, I do not know of a couple in the city of Warham that have had a more beautiful relationship and a beautiful marriage than Jay and I. And I don't understand, and I don't have all the answers, and I don't even seek to, to call upon my Father in Heaven to ask for answers. My desire now is, is to do what Elder Maxwell said, is not to just endure through this trial, 
but to endure well and cheerfully. And sometimes I'm just filled with so much joy and so much sadness that the tears just keep flowing and I can't help it. And people don't know whether I'm sad or I'm happy. And that's okay. I just leave that for them to work out. But um, I just want to back up now when uh, Bob invited us to go to Israel. We were just so excited and just so thrilled with such an opportunity. Never thought such an opportunity could come to us in our life. Well, the week before, <clears throat> We were busy getting ready and buying a few things and getting our suitcases packed. And, and I can remember one night I knelt down and I was just so sad about Bernie and Sarah. It just, they totally consumed my mind and I couldn't hardly think. And I just turned to the Lord and I said, Heavenly Father, we're going to be with Bernie and Sarah in a week. Help me to understand how they feel. Help me to have compassion and help me to be able to reach out and have confidence and to lift her and build her spirits when we're in Israel and, and not to be down and, and not to be negative. And I just wanted to make it the most positive experience. And yet, on the other hand, I thought, if we go over there and just have a marvelous, cheerful, bubbly time, I didn't want Sarah to think that I didn't understand and didn't have compassion. So I told Heavenly Father to please send me some kind of an experience to help me understand what Bernie and Sarah are going through. And I soon found out. <laughs> and it was just a few days later <clears throat> that some strangers were in my driveway and said, get to the hospital. And that Jay had a, a seizure. And I thought, oh, my best friend has seizures. I can handle this. And I got to the hospital and there was President Peterson, who is Jay's doctor now, and uh, and he was waiting at the door for me and he grabbed me and he says, Barbara, this is serious. I says, it is. And he says, uh, Jay is in a coma. And uh, and he said, uh, he's had a, he's, he's got an aneurysm in his brain. He just showed me the the CAT scans. There were several CAT scans. And uh, he showed me the bleed and how his brain was pushed to the side and the pressure that was going on in the brain. And they were waiting for Dr. Reichen and the surgeon to arrive. And, and, uh, okay. and uh, he said, uh, Barbara, this is life-threatening. And I says, Israel. And he says, there will be no Israel. I says, okay. And uh, he says, Barbara J. may not make it through this surgery. Well, we're very blessed. And I don't want, you know most of the details, but um, I'd just like to just share with you two or three experiences. Um, on one account, right after Jay um, took his first bite of food with a spoon with his right hand and he's left-handed. And I was sitting at the table with him and I said, oh, Jay, I says, we're really being tested, aren't we? He said, and he was only whispering at the time, and he said, yes, we are. He said, but I'm at peace with myself. And I've never been able to say that about myself, <clears throat> but truly, Jay is one of the most perfect men I've ever known on the face of the earth. <laughs> Jay says, no, you, <laughs> pointing to Bernie. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I don't know why he has to suffer for all the rest of us, but Anyway, I said, well, Jay, what do you think we're supposed to learn through this trial? And he said, I really don't know. 
He says, but one thing I do know, I'm not yet as Job. He said, you itching? There you go. That's one thing President Peterson told me, is uh, with the kind of brain injury that he's had, he says, they'll pick their nose and they'll do things that you wish they'd never do. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Anyway, um, he said, I'm not yet as Job. And he says, my friends stand by me. And he says, we have lots of friends, don't we? And uh, that leads to my next, <coughs> next experience that I want to share. When we decided that, uh, you know, it didn't even occur to me that my home wasn't adequate until Bernie called and reminded me that I didn't have a bathroom fit for Jay. And, uh, and so I realized that we had big things ahead of us and that big construction would have to take place. So the Lord just inspired us and he just moved us to the right people. The right people were there at the right minutes. And literally, they were on a daily basis. We saw miracles on a daily basis. Now, Jay was out of it during all this, and and I was I just saw the strength and the hand of the Lord come into my life, and I was able to make decisions and uh, quickly, immediately, and without any concern or without any fear, and uh, we just. We just started ripping out the home. And the next thing I noticed, the bishop had all of Jay's priests. And incidentally, he is still our ward young men's president. <laughs> and uh, the priests haven't wanted to release him. And they come and see him on a daily basis. They take turns. There's 24 of them. And uh, they come and they talk to him. They lift him. They've all gone through the therapy training, every one of them. And uh, they know what to do to handle his body in time of an emergency. But anyway, the next thing I noticed, they were in the house, literally ripping out walls and floors. And <clears throat> and Mike and Steve started it. And what took them a day, the priest came and did in one hour the next day. And it was I just stood there and I just bawled. I, I was so overwhelmed with joy and kind of hurt that my home was slipping right away from me and it just seemed like our whole life was just in a major turmoil and, and upheaval and, and uh, then then after uh, the next day Mike and Steve who are an absolute blessing in my life uh, were out in the backyard pruning all the trees the grapes I mean, we have about 15 trees. And at first I thought, what are we going to do? Jay has, he has been the Lord of the vineyard. <laughs> he literally has. He has pruned and thinned and, and uh, gardened our yard. And uh, I thought, gee, everything's going to go to pot. But I didn't even have to say a word to our two boys. They got together and they, they went out and went to work. And then the contractor said to me, he says, I've just learned something. He says, I learned that I haven't taught my children how to work. And that if something happened to me, he says, nobody would know what to do. And he says, everything would be left undone. And he said, I'm going to go home and start tonight and teach my children to enjoy work. He said, did you ask your boys to go out and do that? And I said, no. I said, I'm just overwhelmed that they're doing it. I didn't even know they really knew what to do. And this is what's happened on a daily basis. Mike and Steve have literally taken over and repaired the vehicles when they've needed it. Um, I just have to put out the money. And they do, they do all the work, but they're they're holding down jobs and uh, and dating, and Mike is engaged now, and and his fiance comes every night, every night, and she checks my washer and dryer, 
my dishes, my beds, and she just busies herself around how she's she's better than a daughter. She's she's just an angel. And uh, they are literally pulling us through this experience. Now, um, Jay is, uh, I'm not really sure what all he understands and what he comprehends. About the size of maybe a le lemon and a half, let's see, about this size, was removed from his right frontal lobe. And at the time of the surgery, it took, it took Dr. Reichman five hours to find where the bleed was. And because of it, uh, well, Dr. Peterson, who is our state president, sit on a chair and watch the entire surgery. And about two and a half hours after the surgery, he walked out into the waiting room where our bishop and all the people were in, uh, in his private room. And, and he said, Dr. Reichman cannot find the bleed. And I said, is it still bleeding in his brain? And he said, yes. And we all fell to our knees and we called upon the Lord to lead Dr. Reichman's fingers to the bleed. And it was just minutes later, he said, came back and he says, he found the bleed. And he said, now it's a matter of cleaning out all the the damage that's been done, the clot, the bleed. And so it took him a complete five hours. During that five hours of stress on his brain caused two strokes. And the one stroke is his personality, which is his smile, his laugh, his tears. But I've seen all three now in within the last three weeks. That's a smile right there. Come on, Jay, give him a big smile. There you go. All right. <laughs> and Dr. Peterson told me right at the beginning, he says, it won't be his natural smile, but ignore it and consider it just the same. And he said, it's all in him. And his laugh is the same. And I have literally heard him laugh to the point that his chest, chest jiggles. And it's just exciting. I mean, he makes us all laugh. And he, he still has the same marvelous sense of humor that he's always had. He says the cutest things. The other day I said, oh, Jay, I was doing his hair. And I said, oh, Jay, you're so handsome. He says, you're saying that because it's true. <laughs> and, uh, and then the other day I was giving him a haircut. And I says, Jay, I'm going to give you a haircut. And he says, which one do you want to cut? <laughs> <laughs> and that's his, that's his pure humor. He has never in his whole life been light-minded or suggestive. It's been a pure, pure humor. He still has it. And it's so exciting. Mike just rolls on the floor sometimes because he's so funny. <laughs> but anyway. The other, uh, the other stroke? The other stroke is right here. And that's called the occipital lobe. And that took half of his, what? Yeah. Say it with voice. Vision. Vision. And he has learned to speak with voice in the last two weeks. Before then, it was only a whisper, and it was devastating to all of our children. And now he can give voice, and it's so exciting because um, just like yesterday when I brought him home from the hospital, after the session, <clears throat> The boys laid him on the couch, and, and after the session, they went out and played a little basketball. And so I just knelt down on the floor, and I was just looking right into his face, and I said, Oh, Jay, what are you thinking? And he said, I'm thinking about how happy I am just to be home. And I says, Oh, I'm so happy to have you, too. I says, We're so blessed, aren't we? And he says, Oh, we are. We're so blessed. And... Uh, I said, just think, Jay, you can look at me, and I can look at you, and you know who I am. You can talk. You can hear me talk to you. I says, we have so much. I said, maybe you can't walk. I says, but, but we can communicate together, and we can go on the rest of our life communicating. And so 
we really do have a lot to be thankful for, don't we, honey? Yes. Now, let me just tell you. Let me just share one and one. There's so much. It's just overwhelming. My patriarchal blessing says there will be a time in my life where my friends will rise up to me in time of need. And I, I thought, gee, we've never had a ton of money, but we've had sufficient and um, not enough to go to Israel, though. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we've, we've got a great family, tremendous marriage, great grandkids. I mean, our grandchildren are great. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it, it, life has just gone marvelous for us. But then the whole ward, stake, and BYU have risen to us. You just wouldn't believe our home. It's elegant. Isn't it, Ron and Jean? Bob and Tammy, isn't it pretty? Now, don't go downstairs. <laughs> but anyway, it is just stunning. And I just broke down and cried the day before yesterday to all the sisters in the ward that came and papered my house. And I just said, I'm not worthy of this. And they just says, they hit me, and they says, oh, you are. You're worthy. And, and it's just so pretty, and it's just so fun to take care of Jay in such a beautiful home. I'm just so grateful for the people. The whole city has risen to us. And I, I never realized that we had so many friends. It was just incredible. The BYU came and hung all the doors. And, and our home teacher put in the bathrooms. And the sisters put up the wallpaper and did all the cleaning. And when I was down at the hospital, they just called and said, can we put everything back away? And I said, yes, and they did. They just put everything back on the new shelves and in the new rooms. And it's just marvelous, isn't it, Jay? <clears throat> anyway. The Lord has really blessed us. And uh, Neil Maxwell made the statement once that anyone who does not have a cross or a trial in their life have been severely cheated. And I am grateful for my trial. I really feel blessed that Jay is alive. On one occasion I told him, I said, Oh, honey, I says, I said, just think. I says, you're being able to lift this spoon with your right hand and put the food to your mouth. This was on the very first day. And he says, I'm really blessed, aren't I? And I says, oh, yes, honey, you almost died. And he told me, I almost died twice. And I don't know the full count, and I'm not sure he does. But he did tell me that the Lord made it known to him that he would not get completely well. And I said, why, Jay? Why do you think you're not going to get completely well? And he says, I don't. He says, but the impression came so strong that it woke me up in my sleep. And I says, what part of you is not going to get completely well? And he says, my brain. And I said, oh. I said, Jay, why? Why? And he says, turn to, was it John 4? John, what? What did you tell me to turn to? That the purposes of God shall be made manifest. Mm -hmm. what, what is it? Quote it. Oh. That's a man that was born blind. Oh, yeah. John chapter 9. Oh. 8. Is it right. chapter 9? Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the, the secretary was a male, and he was so shocked that Jay whispered John chapter 9 that he ran out to the office and got the scriptures to see if he had it all together. And he came in and he says he's right. He says he's absolutely right. And it's so I see the purposes of God 
being made manifest in many, many ways through Jay. And I think he's already got his place with our Father in Heaven. And now if I can endure this, we'll just make it together as a family. Our children have all rallied. Our family's been extremely blessed. Our son on a mission has never been so blessed uh, as he is right now. And I just want to just conclude in saying how grateful I've been for Don and Kenneth. They have been uh, angels sent to Orm at the right time. Donna spent many, many hours up in the hospital to give me a little bit of a break. She's, they've just really, really lifted up the hands that hang down. And I'm extremely grateful to all of you. I know that all of, a lot of you have extended your love in many, many ways. And I want to express my sincere gratitude for the many ways that you've all shown love. Thank you very much. I just want you to know that we love you with all our hearts. And maybe Jay wants to say something. I don't know, do you? Yeah. Hold it right up to your mouth. All right. Thanks. I would just say amen to that. And uh, our thanks to all of you. It's a wonderful occasion, a wonderful family to be part of. And whether it's uh, letters or visits or help in whatever way, food or whatever kind of thing, we want you to know we're grateful for the support and the help that we've received. It's been marvelous. It's been really miraculous. Move your left arm, Jay. Show them what you can do now with your left arm. He's just done this in the last week. Oh, he's fudging a little. <laughs> Right. Oh, Jay, right. are you in pain? Are you in pain? No. Tell him about your eyesight, uh, Jay, how you see. That's been very interesting. I could turn my head to see on the left. <clears throat> he only has his at peripheral vision. Um, he is blind on the left side in both eyes. He cannot see me. And so if I come up to his left side and I'll say, Jay, he just jumps because it just scares him. He doesn't know that I'm there. But he sees everything in the middle. In, on the right. Uh -huh. So when you feed him the food, uh, he'll eat half the plate, not know that the other half is still there. But now he's learned to turn it. And he sees the other side. <laughs> you mean if the plate's right in front of him, he'll still only see half the plate. Yeah. That's when exactly. we first discovered it. Yeah, we would feed him in the... That's where, where the meat was. You think he's same blade. good side. Well, it's because of the occipital lobe, and it's not the eyes that are damaged. Right. It's the occipital lobe. It certainly does that describe how the brain itself? works. No, that's permanent. Uh, anytime you have a stroke, it's permanent. And uh, he also, there may be another major surgery down the road. He has major calcium deposits on his hip bones from being uh, idle and uh, not movable. And uh, so he's got big time challenges ahead of him. Bob gave me a blessing and he said that there's still trials ahead. I hope it's just...